Hi, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Happy Halloween to you all, uh, whichever part of the world you're joining us from. Um, really appreciate you joining us today and appreciate your time and what we'll be covering today. My name is Ali Sheikh. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Run Zero and uh, the first SE to actually join the company back in January 2022. I wanted to start with a little bit of uh, a little bit of my, on my background. Um, so I started my career in cybersecurity around 15 years ago in Cairo, Egypt. And I've worked for several companies, including HP, Microsoft, to a security, Cisco, and held several roles in uh, technical sales. And I started actually as a post sales implementation consultant, uh, deploying HP OpenView solutions. Uh, to customers in Middle East and Africa, and I was covering a large territory. Uh, but I was lucky enough to have traveled to some really amazing places in Africa and Middle East. Um, and I was actually one of the first sellers to bring uh, Microsoft, or back at the time it was called Windows Azure, uh, to Africa. And uh, back then, Azure had only like 10 services, and it was before the whole Windows and Linux love story, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, and then since then, I moved to the U.S. in 2016, uh, and I'm from Djibouti, which is a, a country in East Africa. Um, that's where I'm from. So let's jump into it. The topic today will be uh, discussing what are the impacts of unknown assets uh, to your organization and how that could lead to severe uh, security breaches using uh, wor real world examples uh, in today's discussion. Over my two plus years at Run Zero. Something I constantly heard from our customers and the wider audience that we've spoken to is that they have a really good grasp on their managed devices or their known assets, but they still concern and struggle until today with the unknowns that exist in their environment across different attack surfaces and, and what that impact is on the overall security. So from an agenda's perspective, today we'll be uh, talking about why unknown assets in Shadow IT specifically are to this day one of the most significant challenges security teams face. And then we'll discuss what strategies you could use with Run Zero and what are some of the techniques that we employ to essentially shed a light or eliminate some of those hidden corners on your network. Um, and then also giving you a very good understanding of your different attack surfaces. And we refer to these unknown and unmanaged devices as network dark matter. And this is a term coming from the Run Zero research team when they released their first research report. And I'll talk about this in more details in a couple of uh, minutes. Finally, we'll, we'll uncover um, the exposure mediation techniques that uh, Run Zero employs to essentially identify and mitigate those risks. Risks. At the end of it, we'll share a couple of helpful resources that you can take after the, the webcast, as well as leaving some time at the end for any questions from the audience that you have. There is a Q&A box in the, um, the, in, the webinar, in the webcast section where you can put your, your, all of your questions, and I'll make sure to tackle them and answer them at the end. All right, let's dive into it. Um, first thing I want to talk to you about is why organizations until today um, face a lot of issues with unknown assets. And regardless of the customer segment you're in, a customer industry or the size or the different attack surfaces that you have, the reality is that attack surface is constantly evolving. And companies that we speak spoken to are struggling with being able to understand all of the assets that are connected to their networks across the different uh, uh, environments that they manage. And the reality is that there are recent technological trends that have led to a difficulty in security teams being able to manage their attack surface. As you can see here on the left-hand side in this list, you have IoT devices that are more and more being connected to the network. And this didn't exist you know, 15, 20 years ago where you had a cam IP camera enabled uh, to be connected to the network or smart home devices or even uh, some of the um, uh, TVs or uh, some of the uh, media devices that you're using, everyday devices are now needed to be connected to the network in order to function. And of course, BYOD and working from home, this is a trend that has accelerated since COVID, as you all know, and has become more and more common. And now com companies are also offering the flexibility of being able to 
uh, work from home or remote work flexibility, basically. And from an M&A perspective, that's another trend that we've noticed pick up since the year 2010s. Um, as companies are being acquired or merged together, you're also taking um, in your environment the unknowns and the risky assets and the coverage gaps that they might have. And all of that has correlated into an explosion of devices. So you have a larger attack surface than now you have to manage and security teams have to defend. And a run zero survey showed by on average 25% of devices security teams were not aware of. And that's because of the trends that you see here. And unfortunately, this has amplified the uh, the imbalance between security teams and attackers. And on the flip side, as you can see here, declining headcount uh, where security teams or defensive security teams are having uh, trouble with reduced budgets and headcounts. And um, that has, has all added to the fact that it's becoming more and more problem to manage your attack surface. And, and we noticed that this has led to two main fundamental challenges that organizations are facing. Unknown assets, which, just, which we've talked about already, but also unknown as subnets that exist in the environment that hold those unknown assets. And, and of course, the number of devices increasing, which gives attackers more and more entry points to attack from. So how common are the unknowns in organizations that we've spoken to? On the left-hand side, you can see here the, the average uh, run zero survey that we've talked about, where 25% of security teams are unaware of devices that exist in the environment, but also um, the, the range widely varies. As you'll see on the right-hand side, different case studies here, where you can see uh, in York University, for example, which is a university we've worked with, their security team was aware of protecting roughly 10,000 assets. But after we've deployed Run Zero and discovered the whole environment, they actually found 2.5x more devices than they knew about. And that included IoT devices, but also in nature, universities have a, an ever-evolving landscape when it comes to attack surface because you have uh, students connecting to the network. You have faculty members bringing their own devices. You also have uh, other universities they're collaborating with, which obviously opens up their network and has a lot of BYOD or unknown devices that they have. And, and those case studies are real numbers. Those are real data points that uh, a lot of a lot of our customers in different industries has leveraged to better understand their attack surface and be able to get that visibility. And despite the the adoption of many many different security tools and IT tools there is still a significant challenge that remains in being able to understand and identify what devices exist. And there are multiple reasons for that. One of them are the technologies that are currently in place do not have asset discovery, asset inventory, and attack surface visibility as their core functionality. You'll find a lot of companies using, um, whether it's EDR, vulnerability management, MDMs, et cetera, et cetera, and they all unfortunately focus on other aspects of security, which is good for the cases that they are solving. But it still doesn't answer the question of, can you tell me what are all of the assets that exist on my network? but also being able to identify them accurately. Some of these tools are very good at discovering vulnerabilities. Some of them are very good at giving you very deep understanding of the managed devices, whether it's a credentialed scan, whether it's an agent-based discovery. And those will give you insight on the devices you already know about, the ones that are managed. And if we're talking about phone scanners, as you can see here on the slide, a lot of them lack fidelity in fingerprinting. Example that we've seen a lot of the times when we integrate with a phone scanner and run zero is you will get an IP address with an operating system of Linux, but that's where it stops. It doesn't tell you what is actually the type or the hardware of that device. Is it uh, an IP camera? Is it a firewall? Um, are we talking about an, another network device, et cetera, et cetera? And, and their core functionality is not to do active discovery, is not to understand what devices are existing in their network. And unfortunately, it's an afterthought for them. And that's why HD Moore, co-founder of the company, created Run Zero. So today you've heard me mention Network Dark Matter a couple of times. A few months ago, Run Zero released their first Run Zero research report. And it dove into the state of asset security. 
Um, this this report is based on years of data, years of research, and we looked at different wide range of industries, of customer segments, networks, and we looked at what are common exposures and highlighted threats that we've identified. Highly, highly recommend reading through the research report. And at the end of the webcast, there is a link to download the research report, which you can look take a look at. And what we've come across is, is pretty interesting. So when we analyzed all of the network connected assets, we realized and we noticed that devices fall under essentially three buckets, or as we call them, a three-tier hierarchy. The first one are monitor devices. So these are devices that you have high visibility into. Uh, those are going to be your laptops, your servers, your network devices, et cetera, et cetera. And you have high visibility because you can manage them using your different security management solutions, whether it's EDR, NDR, MDM, et cetera, et cetera, or you leverage common protocols such as SNMP. And then you have the middle tier, which consists of devices you know and interact with on a daily basis, uh, smart TVs, projectors, the coffee machine, uh, in the rest area, et cetera, et cetera. But these devices are not as managed as the one that are in the monitor devices section, and they don't support as, uh, and they don't. You cannot essentially update them as frequently. And the reason why is because a lot of these devices have operating systems that cannot have agents installed on them. They cannot support them. So they may exist in different proprietary tools that are provided by the vendor, or in a lot of cases, unfortunately, in Excel sheets. And as we all know, the problem with Excel sheets are they're not updated as frequently and they're siloed, of course, with different teams. And then finally, on the right hand, uh, the right hand side, right, um, the, the third tier hierarchy are what we call network dark matter. And the name stems from or comes from uh, dark matter in cosmology because these devices are ever present on the network, but they're mostly invisible to your IT and, and security management tools. Those are devices such as thermostats, smart plugs, aquarium pumps, et cetera, et cetera. And they often fade into the background and, and relatively go unnoticed for years. Updates, of course, are very, very less infrequent or non-existent. And, and where it gets really interesting is once we start talking about the percentages of these devices. So the monitor devices, those make roughly 35% of your attack surface. And when you combine the 45% and the 19% together, that makes up over 60% of your attack surface. That's a pretty large number. And if you think about that percentage for a second, it's not just that you lack visibility into, but it's also lacking visibility into the risks and exposures that they carry for your organization. Example would be that thermostat or that smart plug, what are the ports and protocols that are open on them? Is that device exposed to the internet? Is it bridging different networks together? Uh, what are the OS running on it? What are the ports and protocols, et cetera, et cetera. And then about the, the network dark matter, um, there was one specific uh, breach that had happened um, where it was the casino attack where criminals essentially hacked I don't know for some reason I'm not seeing um, the slide here. Apologies about that. Okay, there we go. Um, the casino attack that happened a couple of years ago, as you can see here on the on the article in 2017, uh, hackers were essentially able to attack a fish tank that was part of a casino. And the attack happened because the device was essentially sending traffic to Finland indicating that it was connected to the internet, but also bridging to the internal network of the casino. And hackers will, as you all know, look for any weaknesses that exist in the environment that they can exploit. And something like a fish tank becomes a very easy target for them. And unfortunately, many IoT devices today are immediately connected to the network. They do require that, whether it is to be remotely managed or to download updates. And in this case, the fish tank was actually connected to the internet to be able to adjust the temperature of the fish tank, amongst other things. And the incident, if you, if you read the article, the attackers were able to swipe 10 gigabytes of data from the casino. So the result are there are network bridge that occurred, which created an additional attack vector to the attack surface. And unfortunately, things are not slowing down. 
many, many more IoT devices are becoming connected to the network and they become instantly a, a source of, of attack from, from a lot of the hackers. Okay, now let's jump into what are ways that Run Zero can help in identifying whether our network bridges or risky devices or unusual devices that exist in the environment. And at Run Zero, we employ a research security-based approach to everything that we do, whether that is from highlighting risky assets to pro providing precise fingerprinting to analysis of the data, et cetera, et cetera. And what the research team has developed is the outlier score or the outlier uh, report. And that allows you to understand the risk level of unusual assets. So when we, when we scan your whole attack surface and your whole environment, we do that by leveraging different solution approaches. And I'll, I'll dive into more details in a later time uh, during the webcast. With our active scanner, we're essentially able to discover everything that exists in the environment, any network connected assets, but we also ingest data from third-party solutions that you have. So those could be uh, different scanners you have in the environment, this would discover tools, different security tools, EDR, et cetera, et cetera. And what that allows us to do is build a baseline of what the environment looks like, what a site looks like. And from there, we identify if an asset, by doing comparison analysis, if an asset deviates from that baseline, what is interesting that interesting that we noticed is how that anomaly or unknown or outlier becomes associated with the risk level of that asset. And, and Run Zero looks at the asset from different perspectives and compares it to its peers. And the more an asset deviates from the baseline, the greater its outlier score is, which is a singular number, as you can see here. And the analysis we've done is that essentially, the more an asset deviates from the baseline, the riskier it is. And an unusual asset might be riskier than its peers, but doesn't guarantee necessarily that it will be noticeable. So that's what the outlier score helps with, is being able to tell you this asset, for example, has an unusual round trip time, or it has a unique operating system that doesn't exist in the other uh, parts of the network or the site or the environment that we've scanned. Let me give you an example to make it even clearer. Um, imagine that we have scanned your on-premise attack surface and we've noticed the typical monitor devices we've talked about earlier. So those are your laptops, your servers, your network devices, and that is the baseline of your environment. Now, when we finished the scanning and we imported the data, we realized that there is a gaming console, for example, that someone brought in and connected to the network, or maybe have used some unapproved network equipment to be able to VPN to their home, et cetera, et cetera. And in that case, those two devices, the gaming console or the um, unapproved network device, those will have a high outlier score. And that could be in single occurrence or multiple occurrences, but those unusual devices will have a high outlier score. And being able to identify those outliers, we, we realized and heard from a lot of customers that it helped them or helped the security teams break through the noise and answer the question of, okay, now I've discovered everything. I have a full inventory, a full attack surface visibility. What is the first thing that I should take care of? What is the thing, the, the things that merit further investigation? That's where the outlier really helps with. And there are several ways that we provide outlier score in Run Zero. The screenshots that you're seeing in front of you here, that's actually a couple of examples of the outlier report. And that shows you different um, attributes or fields or service attributes in your environments where we're showing where the outliers exist. And as you can see here on the right, that shows you the number of occurrences of that specific device. So on the, on the back, a screenshot, you can see that ubiquity device, there's only a single one of them in the environment. And you can narrow down actually to a specific asset attribute or service attribute by doing a specific outlier report. But we also have a dashboard which provides you um, specific different visual or different user experience where you see side-by-side -side comparison between the most seen operating system and the least seen operating system. And that really helps being able to understand the makeup of the environment.
And, and it's really, really useful to be able to, again, answer the question now that I have full attack surface visibility, what are the first things uh, that I need to, to find out and kind of break through the noise? And it's not, it's not simply about being able to, to discover those outliers or those unknown devices, but the other important thing are the identification of it, the full details of it, and being able to accurately represent what a device actually is. And many of the solutions today either are able to get that level of visibility and level of fingerprinting by installing an agent or doing authenticated scan. But again, that would give you visibility into what you already know. When it comes to unauthenticated scanners that exist in the environments, a lot of them, as you can see with some Vuln scanners, for example, or data aggregators, they only will tell you a certain level of information, like the OS is Linux, and it will stop there. But as you can see here in the slide, there are a lot of instances where we correlate data from third-party solutions and is also set, scanned with Run0 that Run0 would actually augment the information and give you the accurate device type the accurate product, the accurate hardware, et cetera, et cetera. And these are real examples, actually, that we've taken from, from some of the environments that we've scanned. And being able to, to get that accurate representation of the device really helps improve a lot of the security workflow that you have, where you can act on the data because you understand the criticality of it. You understand who is the owner of that asset, and that helps you make the right decision when it's very, very important, whether that is incident response, whether that is threat hunting, et cetera, et cetera. And, and related to that note where the, the identification of devices is very critical and important, um, a couple of years ago, we've worked with a theme park uh, here in the US and they've, they've experienced an abnormal activity in their network. And their incident response team identified that a certain device, specifically an IP camera, was um, they noticed NetFlow traffic going into China. And after investigation, they realized that the theme park, one of the theme park, had a Hegvision camera connected to their network that was sending traffic to China. And their leadership, of course, the first thing they asked are, OK, well, how many of those Hegvision cameras do we have in the environment? And with the tools they currently have, they couldn't have an accurate count. They couldn't answer the question. Luckily, at the same time, Run0 was completing a deployment across all of their theme parks. So they looked at, OK, how many IP cameras and how many Hikvision do we have? And in Run0, we identified a little over 1,200 cameras. And including them were a little over, I think, 150 Hikvision cameras that we've discovered. Not only that, but one other feature that Run0 has is the ability to capture screenshots of any web server running on the device. And those Hikvision cameras essentially were running web servers. And Run0 shown that the web servers were unprotected and they were not encrypted. So you can get an actual live feed from the URL that the HTTP web server was on and being able to get a live feed uh, from that URL. And the screenshots that you're seeing on the top left here, that's actually from the Run0 console, where we're showing you for port 80 HTTP server, there is a screenshot here, and this is for an outdoor camera um, that you can see the credentials there, and then some other examples where you can actually see a live vision, um, a live feed, sorry, of, of the IP camera. So they quickly were able to remediate that before it was actually exposed um, and being able to, first of all, decommission all of the Hikvision cameras, but also uh, be able to secure all of those web servers. And those IP cameras that we're talking about, again, those are part of the 60% of your attack surface that we're talking about where you have limited visibility to no visibility at all. And those are the ones that are very hard to identify and discover. And if you don't have a good understanding of every device on your attack surface, it is very hard to protect them. Um, one of our customers, um, University of, of Auckland, had a significant improvement in finding their, those unknowns. One of their critical requirements was to be able to understand all of the personal BYOD that exists in their network. And it was very challenging for them to track everything across their network because, as we talked about earlier with universities, that is an ever-changing landscape. And, and Paul Westcott over there, a security architect, essentially said that 
it happens on a weekly basis that they'll find new vulnerabilities, whether it's impacting an Atlassian or it's impacting an F5. And for them to quickly understand where do they have F5s located or where do they have instances of Atlassian, it was very, very, very hard for them to find that before run zero. But now they can essentially run a query within the platform that says, show me everything that is running hardware F5 or operating system F5. And being able to patch that very quickly gives that peace of mind that otherwise they did not have. And very similar to what Paul from University of Auckland talked about are the uh, some of the ways that our research team have created proactive exposure mitigation, and that's the rapid response. Um, what our research team does is they look at zero-day vulnerabilities or critical vulnerabilities that are out there, and they create a relevant blog post that they then tell you in the blog post, what is the vulnerability about? What are the CVEs associated with it? Are there any workarounds or updates? And then what are the relevant uh, query, run zero query that you can copy and run within your environment? One, one very important thing to mention here is that run zero doesn't have to rescan the environment once that rapid response query is in place. Because the data is constantly updated and refreshed, you have the information at the finger at your fingertips. So you can go into run zero console, run the query and get the results literally within a second. So it really, really helps when something comes out like this D link, for example, vulnerability to go into run zero and say, okay, what is the, um, what is the blast radius? So what are the devices that we have across our network that might be susceptible to this vulnerability? So you can go in, run the query and find all of the D link. And we've heard from a lot of customers that now they're able to proactively, but also be able to answer the question that comes from the C-level or from leadership of how many of the devices that we have in the environment are susceptible to that vulnerability until your vuln management gets up to speed, downloads the new signatures, rescans the environment, et cetera. It's very critical to be able to quickly understand the, the exposure and be able to remediate um, that, that specific vulnerability. Um, actually, one last point before I move on. It's it's important we also have the ability to subscribe to RSS feeds for those rapid response blog posts that is on the website. And there's a link at the end of the webcast for uh, the rapid response blog post, but it's, it's pretty important. Go ahead, uh, subscribe to RSS feeds, and then you'll be notified anytime the research team does release those rapid responses. Okay, so now let's jump in, look at Run Zero under the hood. And what are the solution approaches that Run Zero employs to provide that full visibility across your whole attack surface? So let's start from the left hand side of the slide here. Uh, we are able to inventory all types of devices, whether that is IT, OT, and IoT, no matter where they're located across all different attack surfaces. So that could be the cloud attack surface, the on prem attack surface, the external attack surface. And the, the reason we can do that is because of our multi-solution approach. We didn't start by building an API integration-heavy solution. We actually started with what is our opinion, the most difficult aspect of attack surface management, and that is building a best-in-class unauthenticated active scanner where we're not using Nmap under the hood or any other open source. Um, this was purpose-built to be safe to scan all kinds of devices, and highly portable to be able to deploy it in different types of environments, whether those are offline or air-gapped, not connected to the network, remotely um, remotely geographical locations where you need to have active discovery. And upon that, we've also added the ability to passively discover the network. And that is useful for certain scenarios, and I'll talk about that in the next slide. And to, to complete the visibility side, we also integrate, as I mentioned before, um, with your current tools and investments that you've put in place. So being able to integrate with you know, your EDRs, your MDMs, your vault managements, your identity providers, et cetera, et cetera, to then bring in that data into Run Zero and consolidate all of that. And then on the right-hand side, those are some of the main use cases that we help with. So the first one, which is asset inventory attack surface visibility, we don't just stop there but we also tell you what are some of the risky assets that exist in the environment. We've talked about the outlier report as being one of those techniques that we use, but also the rapid response to be able to help with 
um, responding to zero day vulnerabilities, as well as being able to understand what are some of the risky devices, misconfigurations that exist in the environment, again, without having to rescan. And then finally, many of our Run Zero customers uh, leverage the Run Zero capabilities to achieve regulatory and uh, risk compliance. And that could be board level decision making, such as where do we have EDR coverage across all of our fleet, or do we have gaps? Uh, for example, do we have CrowdStrike deployed across all of our environment or Tanium? And also being able to answer some of the recent regulations for the financial district specifically, the NYDFS cybersecurity regulation, which mandates that you have an asset inventory complete across all of your fleet and scanning happens on a frequent basis, but also being able to get a vulnerability discovery tool across all of your types of devices. So not just IT, but also across IoT and OT. And we've helped, uh, we've helped a, a financial institution actually recently comply with NYDFS cybersecurity regulation. And then finally, you can choose between deploying Run Zero in SaaS or in our self-hosted uh, platform, which allows you to run the whole Run Zero platform on-prem in your environment without necessarily any connectivity to the cloud. That's really, really useful for um, certain, uh, certain requirements around federal as well as international customers that we have. Now, jumping very, very quickly into the different solution approaches, th there are essentially five ways to do asset discovery. There is the active scanner, and that's across unauthenticated, where you're not using any credentials and then authenticated. Then you have passive discovery, which passively listens to the network, API integrations, which is data aggregator from different tools into one solution, and then finally, <clears throat> agent-based discovery. And what is important to note is that each discovery approach is really useful for a certain type of device or a certain type of environment. One solution approach doesn't cover everything. And Run Zero employs three out of the five solution approaches. And that is the active scanner, unauthenticated, the passive discovery, and the API integrations. Uh, let's talk about each one of them very quickly. So the active scanner is purpose-built, as I mentioned, to be safely scanning OT and ICS environment, for example, because uh, we, we are using a multi-stage approach to discovery where we're not going in this and scanning a single IP address with all of the um, all of the probes that we have, we actually go and do a stage approach where we go and check first uh, what is the makeup of the device before we continue with the second level or second stage of scanning. Um, and we also offer an external attack surface visibility piece of the active scanner where you can deploy a hosted scanner and being able to scan what are the externally facing assets that belong to my org organization. Um, the passive discovery is really, really useful for environments where maybe you're not comfortable using the active scanner. And those are necessarily, not necessarily OT and ICS environment, but that's the majority of the cases. You maybe have very fragile devices that you're not comfortable doing an active scanner. You can leverage the passive discovery in that instance. The other part where the passive discovery can be really useful is if you want to have this always on discovery. Um, near real time. So when we are missing devices that connect to the network during the active scan window, you can rest assured that we're discovering during the passive discovery because that's continuously listening to what's happening on the network. And then finally, with the API integrations, this allows us to get an insight into some of the uh, remote devices. Those are the disconnected devices. So really useful to be able to get that information because a lot of these devices have some sort of an agent installed on them. Um, remote employees is, is one use case for the disconnected devices, uh, but also being able to get additional fingerprinting, additional information uh, to be able to enrich the Run Zero inventory. We also offer a custom SDK. So we have out of the box native integration via APIs that we support. But if there are tools or solutions that you have in your environment that we um, have no direct integration with, you can leverage our custom SDK to build an integration with uh, Run Zero. Okay. So um, Run Zero offers a, a great speed to security. There is no hardware involved that needs to be shipped. We don't require any sort of credentials. So you can literally be up and running in a matter of minutes to be able to get initial discovery. And our approach 
to to asset attack surface visibility and exposure mitigation is that we need to make sure that we're not missing any environment. We need to be able to cover all of your different attack surfaces and get that complete visibility across the whole org. And our superior fingerprinting really helps identify what the makeup of an asset is for those unknown um, or, or shadow IT that you have across your environment. And we've talked about we're, we're safe to scan within OT environments. And, and if that's something, if that's a use case of interest to you scanning in OT or ICS environment, we've recently um, collaborated with the US Department of Energy's National Renewable um, Energy Laboratory. And one of their programs performed uh, an evaluation of run zero in a controlled emulation environment where they basically mimicked realistic utility grid um, or electric utility grid and they ran a scan and run zero and the scope and the uh, the the, uh, the the scope of the project was essentially to understand whether active scanner from run zero would be able to provide visibility and accurate fingerprinting and also whether it would have negative impact from a performance perspective on the network and on the devices. And Run0 was, was able to um, discover everything, provide accurate fingerprinting, but also did not have any negative impact on, on the SCADA networks. And we have, a, we have a report available for you to download if you want to take a look at um, some of the findings from, from the US DOE. Um, okay, some helpful resources that you can take. Um, we offer a free Run Zero trial for 21 days, and that gives you full capabilities of the platform so you can test it in your environment. Um, we also provide you with a free community edition. So once the 21 days expires, you can use Run Zero for up to 100 devices across your whole environment. The free trial actually gives you up to 100,000 um, devices. So you could still use it at your home if you would like to with the community edition. Really useful to just be able to understand um, what Run Zero offers from a lot of the capabilities that we've spoken about so far. Um, rapid response, blog posts, and relevant queries. We've spoken about this earlier. Uh, that's the link. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe to the RSS feed so you can get up-to-date um, information about the rapid responses. And then the research report, there is the link. Please. Um, go ahead and download it and read through it. It's pretty interesting, a lot of the data points. I have covered just a, a small uh, chunk of it. Um, a lot of cool stuff in there. And then we have our monthly um, research website uh, webcasts called the Runs Your Hour. Um, that's a monthly webcast where the research team essentially discuss um, a lot of the cool stuff and findings that they've uh, they were working on and they're seeing in in the um, in the wild out there, so really useful for you to join in there. And please get in touch with us um, if you want to. And I, I thank you all for your time. And let's jump into any questions from the audience. Okay, let's see. Pen tester. All right, so there's a question here. Do you integrate with for the EDR and Veeam backup replication? So uh, the question is, is it possible to integrate with for the EDR? Um, we have a custom SDK integration that we've built with for the EDR. Um, so the answer there is yes. And Veeam backup, um, not a, a named uh, or uh, out of the box integration, but we could leverage it. Uh, using the custom SDK as well. That's a Python-based SDK that we can leverage to do that. All right, there's another question from Alan. Is there a run zero use case for pen test enumeration? This would have to be a lightweight, self-hosted, fully offline version of run zero that could be quickly deployed during testing. And the answer is yes. Uh, we offer uh, both the the self-hosted platform, which is um, the, the the full platform of run zero, but you can also leverage what we call a CLI scanner that is the uh, lightweight scanner or explorer that allows you to scan the, um, the, the offline environment and it doesn't have to be connected back to any sort of console. Uh, the data after the CLI scanner has been uh, completed, it generates a local file that you can look at locally on the CLI or you can also export that information and then import it into your Run0 platform. 
Yes. All right, perfect. Um, let's see what other questions do we have here. Okay. Can Run Zero help with merger and acquisitions events? That's actually a really good question. Um, yes, that's that's actually a big use case for us when it comes to um, being able to vet a merger or an acquisition from a security perspective. And we have a couple of customers that are using us to, to be able to leverage Run Zero scanners to be run into that company you're about to acquire, you're about to merge with, and uh, be able to get that full visibility across all of their fleet of assets, as well as the risks and exposure associated with them. And in some instances, some of those customers actually integrate with some of the tools that they have in place. Uh, for example, CrowdStrike comes to mind. They would integrate it with CrowdStrike, put that data into Run Zero. So it, it kind of minimizes the time that is needed to do the initial security due diligence um, by a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Uh, so being able to get that full report and then pass that information to security so they can understand what is the... Um, the, the state of asset security for that company they're about to acquire. Okay. This is based on the number of explorers used in the environment. Um, okay. So there is a question around, uh, is licensing, does the number of explorers impact the licensing used in, uh, in the environment? And the answer is no. So from a licensing perspective, it's asset-based. So how many assets exist in the environment? And the number of explorers does not impact the, the license. So you can deploy as many as you would like. Um, and we also don't care about the number of integrations. That doesn't impact the license at all. Okay. And then one other question that I'm seeing here, does runs your offer a standalone or on-prem solution? Yes. So we have, we have an on-prem self-hosted solution that could be completely um, disconnected from, from the SaaS if you need to. Um, and that allows you to have the full platform on-prem. We have a lot of international customers that use uh, the self-hosted for that to comply with a lot of the local regulations that they have. Our AWS uh, tenant in Run Zero are in US and in Europe, Germany. Um, so yeah, well, a lot of our federal customers also uses the self-hosted uh, for that reason as well. Okay. Um, one question from, are there language options locally, educational institution that comply with GDPR? Um, so from, uh, their question was, uh, are there language options not off today? Um, if we only offer it in English and then the other question was for educational institutions, do you comply with GDPR? Um, typically with, um, not sure with the European SAS. But uh, to circumvent a lot of this self-hosted or being able to have the data locally would uh, would help with with GDPR as well. But that might be a question for us to to follow up on just to give you an accurate response for GDPR. We have a we have a team that covers uh, Europe and EMEA there as well. Okay, what does it mean to verify proper network segmentation? That's a question from Tony. Um, so we we have a report. Uh, Tony, that looks at assets that are multi-homed or bridging different networks together. So that, that report called Network Bridges essentially gives you an insight into what assets are uh, multi-homed and bridging different networks together. So it really helps to confirm if segmentation is in place. And what we've noticed a lot of the times is people or companies, organizations, would think that they have different environments completely segmented, but they would have an asset, for example, that have a leg or an IP in the in one of the subnets they thought was segmented, and then maybe talking to the uh, external uh, public IP space. So that report is being is really really useful to be able to confirm that segmentation is in place. And um, if that's something that is of interest, please follow with us, and we can give you a demo of that report and and dive into some of the use cases that we help with. Uh, with with a network bridges perspective, um, do you have any examples of runs you're being used for pen testing available on your website? I believe we have blog posts, Alan. Um, not 100% sure from a customer use case perspective, but uh, please follow up, follow up with us, and we can definitely give you some examples, not necessarily on the website. Great questions. 
I think we've answered all of the questions that we had. Um, Beth, are there any that I'm missing? Or do we, did we answer everything? Okay, perfect. All right. Um, really, really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for, for joining. And um, yeah, give us a try. Uh, run the trial. And uh, get in touch with us if, uh, if you have any other questions or we can discuss uh, some of your use cases. Happy Halloween, everyone. Thank you so much.